Webster University is trying to add more bike racks to the campus and is asking students to contribute by turning these boring bike racks into works of art. These are quiet here in the East Academic Building, seen behind me, but in March when they have their grand opening, there should be classrooms filled with students. There are 42 classrooms in this building, as well as 10 computer labs. Gas prices got you down? Find out what your university is doing to make sure you're not using so much gas. Now Dean Carpenter is excited about the changes in the School of Communications and encourages students to contact her by email at car. P-E-N-D-A at Webster.edu with concerns and ideas to help the School of Communications. I'm Caitlin Reardon with GTV. Webster University's Fitness Center offers many different types of workout equipment. Like ellipticals and barbells and an ab crunch machine. I started using a scooter in the sixth grade. It was mainly because my doctors were concerned with me walking too much. This is Ava Roslin, and she has cerebral palsy. She's had it since birth. She just transferred to Webster, and she says the university has done a lot to help her. I get a lot of help from the Academic Resource Center. Um, I, when I first came here, they told me I needed to meet with them, and I met with Kit Maxwell, the disability lady, and she uh, pretty much set me up with everything, made anything I might need help with in classes, like if I needed a note taker, if I need like extra time on tests, anything like that. So they're real helpful with making sure you have everything. Director of the Academic Resource Center, Barbara Stewart, says once a student notifies them of their disability, they figure out what types of accommodations will be needed. It's first based on the report, the medical report that we might get, and then it's based on what the student believes he or she needs. Um, and then we create a list of accommodations, and that actually goes out to the professors. Roslyn's only had one problem with accessibility. The elevator and Webster Hall sometimes doesn't work. Oh. She was in a class on the fourth floor and the fire alarms went off. This is floor one. This she then realized she couldn't take the elevator, so she was forced to take the stairs. A couple of students there made sure I made it out okay and that I was doing okay and they helped me with my backpack if I needed it, so they were real helpful. But yeah, it's, it was definitely a surprise though. Reporting for the journal, I'm Caitlin Reardon. Because those stairs are crazy to try to get up and down. Um, it says Mercy and then it says Psalm 51, 1 through 10. Um, it's a pretty long psalm, but basically to sum it up, it says, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, uh, create in me a clean heart, you know, restore in me and uh, a steadfast spirit. Matt Mason decided to get a tattoo after a rough period in his life to show his faith in God. Bill Duvendak got his tattoos because he's always been interested in different faiths. The two represented on his arms are Hinduism and ancient Egyptian work. Sanskrit mantra, Om Mani Padme Hum. The whole thing is based on the ancient Egyptian story. When you die, your sacred heart, which is real similar to the idea of a sacred heart from Catholicism, is weighed against the feather of truth. And when the scales are aligned like that, it means you've learned all the lessons that there are to learn, so you don't get reincarnated. You actually merge with the Godhead. Both men say their tattoos are supported in their religious surroundings, and their tattoos are important to them. So I figured if I'm going to put anything on my sleeve, I might as well put my spirituality there. You know, I try to keep my faith, you know, as much in the center of my life as I can. Caitlin Reardon for The Journal.